are so thankful that you joined us for this special time of celebration, celebration of the hope that we have, the joy that we have, of the life that we have. I pray that today you would come out of this lifted and encouraged and that you would become an encourager and lifter of others. Let's spend this time together. Let's do this. Church. We're so glad that you're here and joining us this week. And I want to tell you a few things that are happening actively here at Highlands Church. I know all of us are so yearning to be together again once in, inside these four walls. But what is so fantastic is at this time, ministry is still taking place. If it's feeding families, 39 families here locally in Pastorals and San Miguel, 
or if it's meeting high schoolers right where they're at and getting them together in social distancing and loving on them, or if it's camping, going with families and had a little camp out, little family group happen this past weekend, these things are happening. And so we invite you to to give us a call if you're feeling disconnected and connect. A lot of things are happening here and around Highlands Church, and so we want you to be a part of that. Secondly, we wanna let you know that there's a congregation meeting that's going to be happening on June 7th via Zoom. And we invite everyone to this. It's gonna be at four o'clock on June 7th, and you can get the link off our website. And that is so important for you to attend that because that's where we nominate our leaders of the church, our elders and deacons, and they're people just like you. And so I would encourage you to go ahead and put that on your calendar for next Sunday, June 7th at four o'clock, and see the faces of those people who will be leading you into the next year. Like I mentioned earlier, we've been able to feed 39 families here locally. And so I want you to take this moment to check out this video of how it all works from the very beginning, from going to the grocery store to packaging up here at Highlands to getting it on the doorsteps of our families in need. And uh, it's always so encouraging when you knock on the door and you hear the pitter patter of the little kids running to the door and they're yelling out, comida, comida there's food and so it's just a joy and so I hope you enjoy this short clip Father God, as we continue on here in worship, we want to praise your holy name and we thank you, Jesus, for your provisions. We thank you for the provisions that you give to us each and every day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that is new each morning, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can come together, yet we know that's a challenge that we're not inside our church building as normal, Lord, but it's it's okay because you are there among us in that room with a few teenagers meeting in that talk it over groups, Lord God, and delivering the meals to the families, all different ways, Father God, there you are in our midst. And so, Lord God, I pray, Jesus, that if anyone is feeling disconnected, Lord God, that they would connect, Lord, and they would feel that they are heard and seen, Jesus, and that your love for them is immeasurable. And so we're going to continue to worship your holy name here this morning. And we thank you again that you are a mighty God. Let us praise your name. Amen. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail My God Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle For the battle See the victory for the battle. 
during this time of quarantine a lot of us have been made very aware that it's not the extravagant things we miss in our lives it's the normal everyday things that are not there and I mean it's it's a really simple stuff it's high fives you know you look at somebody and it's like you have to have this moral debate in your head if you can give them a high five. It's like, what is going on? 
But it's also good to take that same kind of theory about missing the real simple things and apply it to our spiritual life and realizing that according to the book of Psalms, God puts every breath in our lungs for a purpose. And we can really easily forget to use that for him and to realize that he gives us the ability to breathe so that we might have life and, and full life and that we might lean into him and use that breath and that energy to advance the love that he has for us and spread that to others. So as we continue through this series in Signs of Hope, our prayer for you, our prayer for us is that we can turn the breath that God has given us and the energy he's given us into real tangible action and love to the people around us who really need to hear that right now. So let's just take a minute and go back and reflect on the very basics of things that God has done for us in our life. And that's the breath that he has given us. And I, uh, I'm gonna hand this one over to Russell. You wanna take this? Yeah, sure, Ben. No problem. Right, Russ, take it away. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring life. Darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour.
breathe your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you Welcome back. We're going to continue our conversation called Signs of Hope, which has been building over the weeks since this COVID uh, crisis has happened in our country and in our world. And we have discovered the importance of hope and the signs of hope that we've been sharing with people uh, over the course of those weeks. And we've had people come to us and tell us that it has actually changed their life. These are some fun signs of hope that you guys have been sharing. This is one from our local nurses. A nurse, Jackie, uh, pointed out that she was trying to make her masks uh, a little bit more fun, and hers turned out uh, to be a little different than uh, her niece's, which was a little more reserved. Anyway, good job, nurse Jackie, who also works at the Seas Candy Store. Definitely my kid's favorite person in the entire world. All right, on to the next slide. Uh, this is Angie Britton. She posted this video of her cat, who she got in order to uh, get rid of the gopher problem at their house. I find this interesting because the cat doesn't seem to be disturbed by gophers. In fact, wants to be friends with gophers and is extending its paw out. So again, the world is not the way that we would imagine it to be. Uh, this is one other that has been, you know, just transforming my mind. This is a toasted marshmallows, uh, squares like s'mores, but surrounded by bacon. This has nothing to do with our congregation, but I just thought that you should know this. I would call it the heart attack sandwich. Nurse Jackie might be able to tell you about that a little bit more, but either do this or don't do this. But if you do, let me know. I'd like to know if you survive. Uh, another one that I'd like to point out that is a little le more somber is this great post uh, by actually my mom's uh, neighbor's dog who has a Facebook account, Oliver. And, uh, but he, he seriously, uh, she, she posted through his account this post of all these nurses just taking a break and sleeping on the job and just overwhelmed with their current situation. And we know how that feels, but we want to say thank you to the nurses and all the people, the people who are working in restaurants, the people who are working in grocery stores, people who've been working around the clock in order to sustain our economy and to sustain our city and, and our world. So thank you. And especially to those nurses over there, most likely in New York City, who've been working nonstop. Our hearts and our prayers are with you. Now, the conversation that we're going to have today is called Signs of Hope. And the basic premise for this conversation that we're uh, building off of a scripture from the Bible is that the world is not the way that it is supposed to be. Uh, we've all had that experience where we think that things should be one way and we find out that they are not the way they should be. And, and intuitively in our hearts, we know that they should be good, that they should be peaceful, they should be kind. Uh, if you just open your eyes and look around the world or look at the news any day, you will come away with an experience and a reaction, most likely, uh, where you're saying the world's not the way it's supposed to be. The question I have for you to think about today is how often do you find yourself struggling because of a problematic world? And how many times does that cause a tension in your faith? How many times does it cause you to, to question whether, whether you're on the path or whether, whether you, you're aligned with God? Uh, this is the deep question of faith. Uh, how do the problems of the world intersect with the solution, which is God's love and our love for God? Now, in the early church, they had this same struggle. They were trying to figure out what the future would look like, but they were standing on a road that to them looked like it only had a foggy, dismal future in front of it. Uh, a lot of times we stand there and we look forward to the future and we think, you know what, there's no there's no brightness that we can see. There's no, no beauty in our future that we can imagine. Now, here's, this is the scripture that is written to an early church that could not see a bright future. They only saw darkness. And this is what the early church pastor named Paul wrote to them. And he said the first words, I believe. Any sentence that begins with, I believe, I want to lean in because I want to know, what does that person believe? What are they saying? And it, we know that it's coming from a place of, 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 of faith. He's talking about something that, that is coming from within him from his soul. And so I want to listen to what he's about to say. He says, I believe that the present suffering, now the present suffering is something that we are aware of. We are clearly aware that present suffering is not just something that was biblical, but you and I experience present suffering all the time. 
And he's about to talk about what this present suffering means for us. He says that the present suffering is nothing. Now, by the way, I don't know if you'd be happy if someone told you that the present suffering that you're dealing with is nothing. That's usually the least, uh, the, the least uh, fruitful way to begin a counseling discussion with any person or friend or any person in your life at all. But he says that the present suffering is nothing compared to the co- coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. So what Paul is saying is that, yes, your present suffering is significant. What you're going through is a big deal. But the future is so much brighter than it is dark now. And any suffering that you're going through now, and he was talking to people that were being uh, hunted and persecuted. Some of their relatives were being crucified for the faith that they had. But Paul was saying that dark future, you're exper- that dark present that you're experiencing right now is nothing when you compare it to the brightness of the future that's in front of you. This is how he continues to say, he says that the whole of creation, now imagine all of creation, all the birds, all the squirrels, all the animals, the whales, anything you can imagine, the trees themselves. He's talking about all of creation, anything that God created. He's suggesting that the whole of creation waits breathless. Now, before we move forward with this, as an experiment, I would like you to just hold your breath. Not take a deep breath and hold your breath, but just just stop breathing for a second. There's a certain waiting in that breathless moment. Just to, just to think and pause and reflect. But he says that the whole of creation waits with breathless anticipation. I love that. Breath, breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Have you ever uh, been to one of those parties where someone announces uh, that they uh, are going to have a baby boy or a baby girl, and they call it a gender reveal party, and everybody kind of waits for that moment. Or, or, or if you've ever been to uh, some big announcement, some, some ceremony or something like that where there's some big announcement, and, and everybody's waiting for the big surprise, there is this moment. Paul is saying that all of creation is waiting for God to say, these are my son's daughters. This is my daughter. This is my son. When God announces to all of creation, these are the children that, that are from me. That is, that is what Paul said would be uh, just this, this amazing, glorious experience. And that's you and I. That, that's the experience that we have. That, that the whole of creation is waiting for God to just reveal his love to us. This is a way to put it. The future that God has in store for us is worth waiting for. Have you ever gone to the DMV and thought about asking the people that are sitting there whether they thought that what they were waiting for was worth waiting for? Now, of course, the things they're waiting for are important to try to be uh, uh, clearing a ticket or try to get their driver's license or all those other things that are important. But because because it's not the kind of thing that brings joy, the wait just doesn't feel worth it. But if you go to Disneyland before the gates open, And you talk to the people who've been waiting there, some of them to be the first people into Disneyland, and they've waited for over 45 minutes. And you ask them if they're excited or they're not excited, the difference is what they're waiting for. Their joy unanimously will be be significantly bigger than the people who are waiting at the DMV. I remember years ago, I went uh, in New York City late at night. I was walking around the block with a friend. I turned the corner. And there were lines of people sitting on the sidewalk. And I, I leaned into them and I said, are you guys okay? And they said, oh, we're fine. And I said, well, how long have you been sitting here? Oh, we've been sitting here for 14 hours. Okay, so what are you waiting for? And they said, oh, we're so excited. We are waiting for Saturday Night Live. I, I could see the joy in their faces. They were so excited to be a part of that moment. They were waiting and they had joy. And because what they were waiting for was something significant, it was worth the wait. But the future that God has in store for you is far bigger and far more exciting and far more joyful and far brighter than any of those things that you could imagine here that you've experienced now. This is the other thing that I would like to say is that when you wait for something that's worth waiting for, the way you wait is different. Now, we've all had a master class. We've all had a master's degree. In fact, or a doctorate. We could write books, each one of us, about waiting and the spiritual gift of waiting and what that's like. Because we know what it's like to wait. Some of us are just not ready to wait any longer. But the reality is Paul says that when you wait 
for something that's really worth waiting for, it's worth the wait. It's worth it. And this is what I believe God would be saying to each one of us. Whatever you're waiting for, whether it's the next job, whether it's an announcement of something happening in your life, whether it's an opening of something that you've been waiting to open and it hasn't opened in a long time, whether it's information from a doctor, I want to let you know this, that God has a bright future in front of you, a beautiful future, far more beautiful than you or I could ever even imagine. And it is worth the wait. This is what Paul goes on to say, that great preacher. He said, creation was subjected to frustration. By the way, I do not like this. I don't like the idea that creation was subjected to frustration, but he says that there's a reason. He said it was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. None of us would be stru- choose frustration. But uh, not by its own choice. It was the choice of the one who subjected it. And it goes on to say, but in the hope, and the hope that creation that will be set free from slavery to decay. Now think about that. Think about that. There's a reason that the frustration exists for creation. And the reason is a good one. It's because God has not given up on us. It's because God has a, has a goal for us to be set free from slavery to decay. And instead of from being, uh, being in a slavery that results in decay in our life, this is what God has planned for us. <laughs> but in the hope that the creation itself would be set free from slavery to decay and be brought into the glorious freedom of God's children. This is, this is what creation is waiting for. Paul is saying that it's waiting for us, God's children, to, to free it, free creation, to, to bring freedom and to bring joy and to bring hope into the world. And this is the even more profound point, that God has not given up on you. In your life, God has not given up on you. Even when your parents might have, it felt like in your life, given up on you. Even when your, uh, your teachers, at some point in your life, you might have felt like they gave up on you. Maybe you felt like people in positions of power over you had given up on you. Maybe you felt like your government gave up on you. Maybe you felt like People consistently throughout your life that you thought you could rely on have given up on you, and maybe those voices have been internalized, and even you have found yourself giving up on you. But what you need to remember is that God has never given up on you, and he never will give up on you. That he has a great plan for you in your life. This is the other thing you need to hear. That God's plan is for you to be freed from slavery, from the slavery of addiction, That's a real slavery. Maybe your slavery is the slavery that comes with the economies of the world, the systems of the world. Maybe people in history have heard these words and they've actually been in real slavery and bondage to other human beings in different ways. And they need to hear this. That God's plan is for each and every one of us to be freed from slavery. Bob Marley would say, emancipate your mind from mental slavery. Well, that's true. We imprison ourselves through the slavery of a lack of imagination about our own future, that we find ourselves imprisoned because we cannot envision anything different than our present circumstance. So many people today have experienced their current condition and have said, this is my forever condition. But remember this, there is a future and God has a plan for you beyond your present circumstances. In fact, God has hopes for you, big hopes that God has dreams for you, and they are real dreams. They are not ones built on fantasy. They are ones built upon the plan that he has in store for your life. And your job is to trust God. This is what Paul goes on to say. He says, we know that the whole of creation is groaning together. Now, as I thought about this scripture, the one time I can remember groaning the most is when I had a flu or a fever. Have you ever had a really, really bad fever through the night? And you just, you get to those moments where things are so bad and you just find yourself groaning. If you walk through the hospitals, a lot of times it's tragic, but you'll hear people in different rooms groaning. They don't have anything to, anything to articulate what they are going for. But, but in a sense, you, you, you can hear this deep throated, this deep prayer coming from within their souls. But the whole creation, Paul says, not just you, 
The whole creation, everything that God has ever created has been groaning together. It's not a singular experience, but it's an experience that has been shared. And then he goes on to say, and, and not only that, but suffering labor pains up until now. Boy, many people know what it, experiences, what it is to experience labor pains. And for the people that haven't experienced labor pains, especially the men, those who have experienced labor pains like to remind the men that they have no idea what it's like to experience labor pains. <laughs> they like to remind the men that they should not even venture to to guess or to, to suggest that they've ever experienced a pain close to labor pains because those who have experienced labor pains will tell the ones who have not experienced labor pains that they have never experienced pain until they've experienced labor pain. And I would just like to say, I trust you on that. I'm not going to argue with this. The reality, Paul says, the greatest pain that we can ever imagine, which is a pain that is associated with life, newness coming into our life, that we can associate that with what God is doing in our world and around us. Paul goes on to say, and it's not only creation. It's not only the creation. We ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first crop. I love that, the first crop. We have some plants in our backyard, and uh, the other day, our basil plants were starting to bloom, and I went and got some of the first crop. There's nothing like the first crop. It's so great. And we can't wait for the first crop of our lemons and our peaches, and our tomatoes, and when we have that, there will be a joy. Paul says, we ourselves who have the Spirit as the first crop of the harvest. All that joy that you've experienced in your relationship with God is only the beginning, Paul says. But we also groan inside as we wait to be adopted. I just can't get rid of the image of me going into the little dog pound uh, with the, with, and finding all of the little puppies waiting to be adopted. But we too wait to be adopted. Or you can imagine those movies like, uh, like Annie or all those movies about adoption where the kids are waiting and waiting to be adopted. That is, uh, that, that is what Paul is saying, that, that waiting. They, they actually tell us that right now there are so many kids in the systems of our government and, and the unjust systems of our world that are waiting to be adopted. Even reflecting on that, we can recognize that, that, that we too, are, they're, they're, we're waiting for something new to happen in our life, for a promised future, one that, that we have known that we deserve. But it's not just being adopted into an earthly family, but, but being fully adopted into a heavenly family. And Paul goes on to say, it's not just an adoption that we're experiencing in the present, but it's one that's now, and it's also being fulfilled in the future. And it's when our bodies, and for our bodies to be set free, for us to be totally free from everything. Paul says this, I love this. He says, we were saved in hope. If you've ever thought, hey, why are we talking about hope so much? Well, I don't know. Maybe we would ask the Bible the same question. Why, why are they talking about hope so much? See, hope is important. Hope is key. And the Bible says that we were saved in hope. It says, if we see what we hope for, it's not hope. If we see what we hope for, it's not hope. Who hopes for what they already see? I love that. I love that. Who hopes for what they already see? Who is, who is they, who, who's out there saying, you know what? I've got a great big plate of food in front of me and it looks fantastic and, 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 and I just wish I could have a big plate of food in front of me. That doesn't even make sense. Paul's saying, who sits there and says, I wish I could have something I already have? No, Paul says, you only hope for things that you don't have. You only hope for things that are not there for you and not available to you right now. He says, no, but if we hope for what we don't see, Paul says, if we hope for what we don't see, we wait, for, we wait for it with patience. And that is the thing that we have been all trying to hold on to. Where is the patience in this hoping? See, we have this deep patience that comes in. Paul says that in the same way, in the same way, the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. When we're not patient. And we're just groaning. And we don't know what to say. And we feel like our prayers are not enough. Have you ever said a prayer and just, I mean, so many people, every time I say a prayer, honestly, I sit there and say, man, you know what? The prayer I just prayed, it's ridiculous. It's not, it's not, a, it's not really articulating what my soul wants to say. And you may think, hey, you know, those people, they really know how to pray. Every single person who has ever prayed has come away from that prayer experience feeling like the prayer has almost said what they want to say, but has not really said what they want to say. You're not alone if you've ever felt that your prayers don't say the thing that you want to say. It actually says the, the Spirit comes in and it helps you to get beyond your groaning. And it says, we, I love this, this, we don't know what we should pray. 
But the Spirit himself pleads our case. The Spirit actually says, no, 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 you, you see, this is what they're really saying. I know they're saying something that's coming out of their mouth, but there's actually something deeper. There's something, something more profound that they're really trying to say. And it goes on to say, in the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weakness. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. Isn't that a beautiful image of the Spirit groaning for you? The Spirit just making beautiful uh, Echoes of your soul up to God. It says that the one who searches hearts, the one who searches hearts knows. That one knows how the Spirit thinks. God knows what the Spirit is thinking. Does not even need to, need to translate because he pleads for the saints. He pleads for the saints. That would be the, the epitomal prayer for every single person, for each one of us, that we would pray for the saints. They would pray for the people, uh, the people of this world inconsistent with God's will. And that is key. To not, just, to not just have a prayer that is yearning for the future, but one that lines up with who God is and what God, what God wants us to do with our life and how God wants us to live our life. The scripture goes on to say, we know, and I love this, it's already talked about what we don't know. We don't know what to pray. We don't know what to do these things. But now it's saying we know. We, what do we know? We know that God works all things together for good. All things for good. There, is there anything that God does not bring in to his God good plan? No. Even the worst thing that you could ever imagine that ever happened in the history of the world, that thing, God will turn on its head and work it toward good. Because that's what God does. We call that God's jujitsu. <laughs> the jujitsu is where uh, someone is fighting someone else and they actually use their own momentum, the, the enemy's own momentum and their own energy in order to topple the enemy themselves. What a beautiful art form. What a beautiful way of fighting. And that's what God does. God actually uses the enemy's own momentum and own energy in order to destroy the enemy. That's pretty beautiful. See, God, God has, a, has a more profound way than we could ever imagine of taking all the things that are happening in this world and working them toward good. And that is the promise. And not just for good, but for the ones who love God. See, see, this is the key. If you're, you're trying to figure out what, what the scripture is trying to tell you right here, it's about the love, the love and the relationship with God. Again, for those who are called according to his purpose. You see, it's all about God's will and it's about aligning with God's will. And hear this, God knows God knows the workings of your heart and hears the groanings of your soul. If you ever thought that God didn't understand you or God was not listening to you or that God was not aligned and not tuned into your soul, you're wrong. In fact, God is more tuned into your soul than you are. Even when you are saying things that you think you're saying, it, the scripture tells us that the spirit comes in and actually speaks on your behalf and says, hold on, just, just put that away because we know God, that's not entirely with your will. So, so he covers over your prayers and actually emphasizes those things that align with God's will and brings them up to heaven. See, our part, our part is simple. Our part is simply to love God and trust God to do the rest. That's all scripture is asking us to do. It's to love God and trust that God will do the rest. How many times do we feel that there's such a more complicated, complicated uh, call in our life? That, that, that we, would, we would have to do a 12-step plan or that we would have to, have to do these 50 things in order to achieve God's love in this world. No, God actually just welcomes us with his embrace. He just holds his hands out for us. So the scripture says, God works all things together for good, for the ones who love God. What do you do? The scripture only says, just love. That's it. Just love God. Love the one who created you. Again, Paul says, we know more. We know more. We know this. We know this because God knew them in advance. Think about that. God knew them in advance and he decided in advance. Who decided? God decided. And he decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his son. Have you ever heard anyone say, no, it was my decision. It was my decision to be conformed to Jesus Christ. No, the Bible actually says it was God's decision that you would be conformed to Jesus Christ. Wow. 
And this is, this is a hard thing for people to deal with because, because they don't like the idea that God would, would choose to love them and God would choose to, to intervene on their behalf. But the Bible actually tells us, no, God's chosen this to happen in your life. That God decided for you to be conformed to the person of Jesus Christ, to the mind of Jesus Christ, to the body of Jesus Christ, to be shaped and to be molded so that you can experience what it's like to live life to the fullest. This is what scripture goes on to say. That way, that way his son would not be the first of many brothers and sisters. Have you ever thought of yourself as being the brother or sister of Jesus? That is the adoption. That is the, the waited for adoption that we have all held our breath and all of creation has waited with breathless, breathless anticipation for. This moment when we would, we would be revealed. The Bible says those who God decided in advance would be conformed to his son. And it goes on to say, he also called. That's beautiful. That he actually has a, a specific job and a specific, specific place for you in his kingdom. And that he has called out to you. I don't know if you've ever been in a place before where someone, where you feel like you're lost and you can't find someone and, and you just get disoriented. I always get that feeling at the Mid-State Fair. And then someone will call out my name and it will usually be my wife or my kids. And when I hear that, there's this sense of, of belonging and feeling like I'm reconnected. That's what God does to us in the world. We get disoriented, we, we, we get confused, we get lost, and God calls us out. The scripture goes on to say, those whom he called, he made righteous, and he also glorified. It's a, it's a beautiful idea that God actually, uh, God actually takes us from a place of, of being in darkness and not knowing about the bright future to a place uh, of, of being certain about our future. And knowing that we're certain in our future because of what Jesus did, because Jesus has, has made us righteous, has, has, has redeemed us and restored us in our minds and our souls. So Paul asks this question. This is the big question that it all finishes up with. This is the question I'd like you to think about. So what are we going to say about these things? I love that. What are we going to say? I think a lot of people at the end of a Sunday message or a conversation have that same question. What am I going to say about this? How am I going to respond? What is, going to be my, what is going to be my response to all of this information that has come and all of these ideas that are new and change the way I, I think or feel and see the world? Paul says, what are we going to do with this? What are we going to say about these things? And he says these words. If God is for us, then who can be against us? If God is for us, then who can be against us? I think that's the question that we need to ask too. If God is for us, who can be against us? It's a question that we need to ask every single day when we encounter difficulty or we feel that we, uh, that, that we just can't make it out of our present circumstance. Anytime that we feel that there's darkness and that is, the, that is the permanent condition of the world and it is not true, that there is a bright future in front of all of us. Anytime that we get deluded by the circumstances of our world and we get deceived by, by the voices that have come into our life that has told us that we're not enough. Anytime we hear that, we need to remind ourselves with this question, if God is for us, who can be against us? See, God has a big, bright future for every single one of us. And we get the privilege of approaching a creation that is groaning, that is groaning, as much so as someone might be groaning if they had the flu or the fever. In that place where they just don't know what else to say because they have nothing left, creation is groaning. And they're waiting. They're waiting for hope. You see, people need hope. Remember this, people need hope now more than ever. No, actually, that's not true. People have always needed hope. It's not just now more than ever. Ever since the creation of time, people have needed hope. People need hope, but we're gonna respond and we're gonna help our community to see the signs of hope. Have you seen the signs of hope around town? I had one person tell me the other day, you know what? I'm sick of seeing the signs of hope. I'm so tired of, of hearing these words, don't give up. And I thought about it for a moment. I thought, maybe we should start taking down the signs that say, don't give up, or, or, or we can do this, or, or air hug, or thanks heroes. Then I realized that they just need to see the signs more. That they need to hear the message. 
in every way that we can possibly communicate it. I love that we're, we're bringing food to people who don't have food. And they are, they are praying out to God. And even if they're not praying it with their words, we can hear their groans. We know that they're groaning out and saying, please help us. And what do we do as a church? We bring the food to their doorstep. Wow. That is how we help people to see the sign of hope. It's not just the signs that you see out there. We're going to raise awareness As we connect through Scripture, you and I, we're going to dig deep into Scripture and we're going to find out how Scripture can help us to do this job. And then we're going to learn to share the hope that we have with others. And this is is not for no purpose. It's going to result in people living with renewed purpose. And if people live with renewed purpose, both individually and and communally, if they live with renewed purpose, they will grow stronger no matter the circumstances. COVID can get worse. If COVID gets worse, people will still grow stronger as long as they have hope. The economy could get much worse. But if we, we know that if people live with renewed purpose, they are, going to, they are going to get stronger no matter the circumstances. We know that if people are standing in a cloudy present moment and they can see no further than, than the darkness in front of them, that if we bring hope into their life, that they will live with renewed purpose and they will grow stronger no matter the circumstances. I am so proud of you. I'm so proud of each and every one of you who have helped. I don't even need to ask this question. If you are gonna help, will you help? Will you help people have hope? I know you will. And I know you're gonna do it. And whenever you need an extra injection of adrenaline in this journey to bring people hope, you can just ask this simple question. If God is for us, who can be against us? Can there be anything that can get in our way? And the answer is no. Because the one who created us, who has a great plan for us, is for each and every one of us and has a brilliant, bright future promised for us and knows the groanings of our soul as his very spirit inhabits our minds and hearts. And as our prayers are lifted up, he knows He knows the depth behind your prayer. Everything that you've never said, he knows how you feel and he knows what you're really saying. I pray that you would just enjoy this journey of signs of hope with us and that you would be excited about what God is gonna do in your life. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for the way in which you dig deeper than even the words that we speak and into our souls and that your spirit lifts up our our deepest longings and our deepest yearnings and especially those ones and only those ones that align with your will. That we can trust you, God, that through the power of your spirit, you're gonna call us forward into a future that is aligned with your will and that you're gonna carry us forward and love us forward and that you are, you are giving us one job and it's so beautiful. One job, it is just to adore you and to celebrate you and to reflect on your goodness as you carry us forward, to just, just rest in the truth of who you are, which is, which is essentially what it means to, to love you, to love you, to love not just what you do, but to love you, God. So God, we thank you for this good news today, that we have been freed, that we have been freed by your love, and that we, by some confounding confounding work of your hand, God. You are so magnificent. You have allowed us to be part of your glorious, bright future that the whole of creation has been waiting for. Let us live like that, God. Give us your spirit to continue to live out this purpose and to do it dynamically and powerfully and in alignment with your will. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said together, amen. Thank you again for joining us here at Highlands Church Online. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on in our nation. A lot of stuff. And we believe that there is no better time than to really show our local community and our neighbors what the church is really about. And because of your financial support and what Highlands is doing in our communities, it's working. We are able to go out, like you saw earlier in Katie's video, go out and tangibly show the love of God. And we can't do that without your help. And so we just want to say thank you. Because of your financial support, we're able to do that on a weekly basis. 
to go out into the communities, reach and share the gospel and show the love of God. And so keep it up and we can make a difference together. You guys have a great morning.
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, God, you are my living hope. Thank you once again for joining us online. May the peace and the protection of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you in the wilderness. May he protect you in the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at all the wonder, at all the beauty that he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless each and every one of you. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Bye.